Yeah, I mentioned that this was a the hotel and a spa. So I took a swim this morning. This really neat, neat pool. It's uh, hot in here though, and it was uh, it was uh, nice and warm. And then not much to see back there, but there's a view farther in that I want you to see because it's gorgeous. <clears throat> the saunas are over that that away. But I'm assuming this is Krems. I think I can go out on the out here, yes, I can go out here. Moon is still out. Uh oh. Kinda slick. I don't go over. But, uh, there's the Danube, I believe. In the distance, the Danube. I think we're going to be closer. To... There's some church spires. And I'm not sure what these mountains are, but we're at the base of some some form of mountains. But I'm not sure. Let me go back. And then there's an outdoor pool, but I'm not sure where that's at. Oh, it's up top. That's why. Well, how cool. I gotta go slow or I'm gonna go over. But it's a pretty neat place. Uh, so these tours have really nice accommodations. The food's fantastic. I don't know how you get up, up to the pool. I'm not sure. That's probably all closed off anyway. But there's a taste of that. Now I'm going to go do a little bit more. So I got this last night, but this is just going to show you the lobby. It's a quaint little place in Krems, Austria. There's a A little store and the bars up there and here's the, the lobby they got a really nice restaurant in here a couple of nice restaurants bottles of wine And over here, I'm not sure. I've never seen this before. I'm not sure. I guess traditional dress. I'm not sure. And I can't read German, so I have no idea. Interesting. There's a kind of a quaint little picture. I just heard, heard an owl up in the mountains. Oh, those look like grapevine. Great. Hear the owl? I'll shut up. Hear him? Uh, I can. <laughs> He's up there somewhere, up in the mountains. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah, exactly. That one and the one over there. Wow. Picturesque. Well, that's Rosa yeah, Summer. That's what you got up. That's <laughs> what I said. That's what I said. You call it, Rosa. On the tour bus. Uh, <laughs> have a pretty good crowd. Everybody isn't on board yet. There's Helena. She's part of the tour. I walked past and the room 212. It was open, so I closed it. No, the mine. door, yeah, uh -oh. the door. So oh. please, always make sure you close the door. There we go. And there's Alan in the back there. 
bloke walking around downstairs saying that somebody had locked his key in his room. He might be in there and meet you with your clothes. Did you do it? <laughs> He's really oh, good. Humor. He owns the company. He the key boy, is he knowledgeable. Does anybody want water? The produce of which you drank last night, Guru. the town hall this is Stein and looking to your front left the bridge going across uh, the Danube here the far side of the Danube is the town of Mountain in 1805 uh, more or less on the site of where that box bridge is uh, there was a wooden bridge that was the bridge that Kutusov would have crossed or more or less the location of the, the bridge that Kutusov would have crossed we're going to come back here to Stein uh, towards the end of our day. Um, this will be our, our first stop before we then go back into to Dernstein to talk about um, uh, Kutusov's um, uh, snaring movement. Um, just to make clear, boy. Uh, around Dernstein. It's talks. Uh, but just to, to pick. It's a Catholic monastery. Now you can appreciate it nicely. This is actually the beginning of the tour uh, of the battles. The, we're actually uh, today and uh, I think a little bit tomorrow is going to be uh, pre-engagements. So I'm sure he's going to tell us all about it. That is we're in Ensdorf. There's a bunch of neat Catholic churches all around. Going down to the Danube. <laughs> Where are we? Well, we're standing on the south bank of the River Enns, E-N-N-S. And on the far the bank, Danube. you can see the town of Enns itself. Um, the Danube, the river flows down this direction and, and its confluence of the Danube is about half a mile uh, downstream from this point here. And in 1805 there was a wooden trestle bridge that went across in this vicinity. I imagine it's, it, this bridge has replaced this, its location because we came down, you notice we came down the main road past the castle uh, and across. Now the bridge in 1805 would have been much lower. Uh, but points to note here that clearly the um, the far side of the river bank dominates this side of the, the river bank. So that's where we are. Just just a bit of a, a recap on our on our timeline. Um, so from yesterday, we know that Mac, Mac had surrendered uh, his forces on the 20th of October. Um, and Napoleon had released him to go back and carry the news to um, his, his own troops and to his allies. And on the 23rd of October, Mack meets with Tusov and um, introduces himself um, as the, um, uh, the unfortunate General Mack. A Russian diarist of the time, you're probably familiar with a chap called Ermolov, was a uh, Captain of artillery, but later uh, a, a general in the 1812 campaign, he said that Mack had distinguished himself by travelling faster than the news of old. Uh, the Austrian army did not have a more efficient fugitive, he said. <laughs> <laughs> On the 25th of October, then uh, after that capitulation, the Grand Armée commences its move eastwards towards where we are now. 26th of October, uh, Kutusov is still further up uh, upstream at the Danube at Branau. The size of his army is about 27,000 Russians and 18,000 Austrians under a, a general by the name of Mervelt. So he's got a force there of about 45,000 men. And on the 29th of October, as the French approach him, 
he decides to abandon his fortress at, 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 at um, Braunau and uh, drive eastwards back on to what he suspect, what, what he hoped would be reinforcements coming from Russia. Now there were three large armies that were assembling or had, had assembled in Russia and were commencing their march. Um, and um, Uh, you can the, the, the large of which is under a chap called General Bux Howden. Um, now the problem that they had was when we get to Auschwitz, to the north of Auschwitz you'll see the hills, beyond that you've got Moravia, but to the north, of, well it's in Moravia, but to the north of Moravia, today is Silesia and Poland, but in 1805 was part of Prussia. Okay, so the threat is always overhanging Napoleon that should the Prussians come into the fight, then they can come driving down from the north and, and cut him off at various points to, to his rear. Um, but at the time, the Prussians are not playing ball with the Russians and they won't allow those Russian armies to um, travel through Prussian territory. So they have to come around a circuitous route to enter Austrian territory to, to, to reinforce the Katusos. Uh, but the Katusos' main role now here is to hold up the French advance for as long as he possibly can <coughs> to allow, uh, as I say, those reinforcements from Russia to come up but also for the troops, the Austrian troops, to the south to come up. Now remember yesterday I talked about Hussein being given control of uh, the French troops on the line of the Adage and his orders were to hold. But on the 25th and 26th of October there's a battle there at a place called uh, uh, Caldiero, a small river the Caldiero River, which is a bit of a draw between both sides, but the outcome of which, uh, as a result of news coming through to um, uh, the Archduke Charles of Max Surrender, is that the Austrians then commenced their withdrawal northwards uh, towards Vienna. Uh, and of course Napoleon is aware of that, so it's crucial to him to be able to bring the Russian army here uh, to contact as quickly as possible to take them out of the game. Um, as a consequence of that, when he commences his march, um, he then diverts the two corps of uh, Marshal Ney, but firstly Marshal Marmont's second corps, uh, down to the south to start blocking the passes coming out of the Tyrol um, and the Vorlberg uh, in, into Austria proper. So he wants to stop uh, any, any of the Austrian troops coming into this theatre of operation. <laughs> Ney, once he's free to move after his five days on the 26th of October, he's able to, to move as well. So between them, Ney and Marmont are looking towards the south to the right, the French right flank, and protecting that from any egress from the, uh, the Alps passes uh, onto the French right flank. Um, on the 30th of October, Napoleon now has crossed the border into Austria as well. He enters uh, Brunel and we have a small action on the 31st of October at a place called Lamba. Um, it's a small rearguard action, uh, the Austrians withdraw. Uh, and then on the 4th of November, we find ourselves here uh, on the Ents. And if you've read War and Peace, if you've seen uh, the, the, the various films and series or whatever it is, the military side of War and Peace starts here and you may remember the scene where you've got that wooden trestle bridge um, and the cameras are normally focused across over onto these heights here and this is where the Russians generally uh, in War and Peace get their first view of the French as they're advancing. And the, the Russians coming across here there's, and, and, and there is a troop of, or, or there's a couple of squadrons rather, of the Pavlograd Hussars uh, in War and Peace, commanded by a chap called Denisov, who wolves his R's all the time, you remember? And, uh, and young Rostov is, uh, is a cadet officer uh, in there. And Rostov is chomping at the bit here because he wants to make uh, his first, um, uh, wants to see his first action and make a name for himself. And he's, he's hoping that somebody's going to see what it is he's going to do. But at the same time, he's anticipating what's war all about, and he goes through all of that, uh, that dilemma in his mind. But what we will be seeing is, is gradually, uh, on these heights here, the French will make an appearance. And, uh, and what we see are the French light troops making an appearance in their blue, in their blue coats coming down, 
on the heights here and, and then we will see along here uh, eventually the guns uh, arriving. Now I've jumped the gun a bit because why is Katusov here at this particular point? It had been Katusov's intention to make a hold here, a delaying action. Because there's a bridge here across the ends and there's another bridge at through the place called Steyr. And Mervelt was holding um, the bridge at Steyr and Katusov's main force was holding the bridge here at Enns. Napoleon's main force is coming through Enns, but his right flanking force, or the immediate force in the, in the theatre, uh, is that of Marshal Davout's uh, third corps. And they make a push on Steyr and succeed in breaking through. And the reason they can break through is that Mervelt, with those 17,000 men, decides doesn't decide, does withdraw down to the um, to the southeast, away from Katusa, uh, and without telling him. And of course the Russians think, well this is a betrayal, this is cowardice, why have they exposed us in such a way? But once the bridge has been forced at style, although Katusov had dug in here and created a number of fortifications on this on this eastern bank. Uh, the whole position was compromised, its left flank was completely compromised. So the order was given for the Russians to withdraw. They're coming across the, uh, uh, the bridge here, and the orders are given then to fire this bridge. And it's one of these last minute affairs, they just managed to get all the troops across. The perfect guard hussars get onto the bridge eventually, uh, and they set the bridge alight, and it is destroyed. And so some time is gained for the Russians to be able to. Uh, get out of this position. So that's happening on the that's happened on the uh, the afternoon, the evening of the fourth of November. And just going back to Mervelt, why did he disappear off to the southeast? It transpires that it didn't transpire until after the war that he'd uh, oh, sorry set after this campaign that he actually received orders direct from Vienna that he should take his force to the southeast, and that the orders to cancel that order never reached him before he decided to commence that, that manoeuvre. Um, so, we're here now at, at Enns, this is the first action. Uh, once the Russians have withdrawn, orders are given uh, by Marshal Murat, who's commanding the, uh, the advance guard here, supported by Land's division, um, that the cavalry divisions will cross this bridge Oh, so we'll cross the river, and the bridge has been destroyed, but we'll get across <coughs> the river. So that gives us an indication that the river can't have been that difficult to ford if we can get across the next morning. Um, and they will parade on the, uh, the plains on the far side. Uh, and as we as we move and uh, we'll talk about the review that the, uh, the, the Prince, the Prince Muir will carry out troops before they commence, commence their, their pursuit of the Russians. And from here on the morning of the 5th of November, they will push all the way forward to and fight the Battle of Amschleppen, Oed by Amschleppen. Um, and that's cavalry and infantry travelling the distance. So when we get back on the bus and you think about that distance that we're travelling, it is quite considerable and the pace that they are marching at is, is quite considerable as well. But look at the terrain. Look how flat generally it is um, when we leave here and then it starts breaking up and you'll start seeing these ravines or defiles, I think is the French call them in many of their reports. Whether we are actually following the original road or not, I, I'm not so sure. A lot of the accounts that we read in the reports, um, a lot of the reports were published in uh, a book by a couple of Frenchmen called uh, Colin and Allenberg at the turn of the 19th century uh, and those reports have got all the cavalry division reports, the reports from the chief of staff to Bertie or so, and they all refer to them going along a defile. But I think a defile is not what I would imagine a defile to be, which is a very steep um, valley, but I think it's more of uh, a road that's following uh, the valley itself. But you, know, you need to look at the ground yourself and work out where you think they're going to be following. Generally, the route we're going to go now is from Enns through to a place called Strenberg and then on to the um, What else do 
způsobem a přesně rychlý. Well, yeah, just another quote here um, about Mervelt. Um, Mervelt's comment uh, on Kutusov was not particularly complimentary. He said about Kutusov, he seems unacquainted with the art of war and especially with operations against the French. A very different proposition to campaigning against the Turks. He leaves time and distance completely out of the question and is most unwilling to risk his troops. All of this will make it difficult to persuade him to advance. Which is rich coming from, from, from Mervelt himself. Um, Yeah, and of course the, the, the point I felt to make here is the battalion cavalry. So I've talked about Davo being on the right, we're talking about Lanz and Mura here on the left, following this road, keeping their flanks on the Danube, and the, 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 the bottom of the diamond is, is sort of the Imperial Guard. So this is the battalion cavalry uh, in, in, in formation. Any anybody like that? like a boat club of some sort because of that and they have a door if I could read German I could tell you what this is maybe Will Will could tell us what it says <laughs> So yeah, that's perfect. Oops, you've done You're okay. I want to get the... We started here, and we're right there. Shows everything, sort of, kind of. Now that's, that was, was a real bird action. Napoleon stayed in here in this building. We can see it, but nobody wants to get off with me. <laughs> Not fair. battle took place up here we're gonna learn about it I'm not sure what that's about it's like a windsock for airplanes but there's a historian he's gonna tell us all about what's going on in this beautiful place Good, good battling fields here. It's a church in distance. I'm gonna stop there. Get that. If I can make it not shake. Yeah, let's turn this off. It's shaking. Clucking over there. O E D is the name of the village up that way. This thing's not focusing very well. Oh boy. Terrible. Oh, 
Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, it is. We don't have um, a lot of information from which we can precisely position where this battle happened. So you have to use, this is the whole purpose of coming on a tour like this, is that you see the ground, you know what the cave is. You know um, a little bit about the story, that there was an action at, 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 at Armstrong. You know that from that, that there were lots of woods. And, and you probably know that if this is Oed, which you can see straight to you, straight to your front there with the prominent church all seen that this is probably unlikely the road here that would be side which goes past that yellow building blue building and into those woods and then swings around there conveniently to uh, to go underneath the motorway um, probably wasn't the road in 1805 and I would hazard a guess it's only a guess it's inherent military probability from the information that we have that they were travelling through a road that was surrounded by forests and they were going through a defile. And there are, and I know because yesterday I drove around all of this area in my little uh, Suzuki S12, great car actually, I thought it was a really good car, and I drove all the way around here. And I think, and it's only what I think, that the main road in 1805 that they would have been put, uh, following was down in this area here, through these woods, and it makes its way up through into Owen. It makes sense. It makes sense. And in 1805, this area was far more wooded uh, than it is today. And so what do we know about the battle that takes place here? We know that those hussars that had taken those Austrians prisoners at Strengberg, some six kilometers to our rear, <coughs> were on a quite high. No, none other than Marshal Mura himself, the Prince, uh, along with his uh, secret boss, uh, Belliard, um, and he's coming across through these woods here with his cavalry, and, and suddenly there's a clearing in the woods, and in front of him he sees um, about nine Russian battalions deployed on the heights of Oed. Now that's the first clue that we have and this is in the French reports after action reports that are written later that day. They say the Russians were deployed on the heights of Oed. Well, that's Oed. No, you're good. The heights, <laughs> Don't worry. Okay? So I'm saying that they were deployed on that front there and if the road was going around to the right to the left then that's the wrong position of people. A rear guard action. So the going down through the valley and up to Owen. Okay, it's high, I don't know. Okay. But this, this is how I was talking in the battle. But I down in there. Right down through that valley. There are roads down there. And as they come out of the field, Cavalry and the 9th of this art, the 10th of this they've been travelling all day at quite a pace. They've just got an action six kilometres back. They're pushing forward, uh, and you can imagine they're pretty exhausted by this time. So, as they come out of this wood and they see those Russians up on the heights there, they are charged by the Russian cavalry. You and get a drift. I'm going to run out of room and battery, so I'm going to shut this off. I thought they were chickens, but they're not. They're geese. Let's see if we can get the geese goosters in there. There's one. Oh, they shut up. They were yelling there before. I think they were fighting.
Well, he's supposed to open up. He just did it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. There's a guy in there. I don't know. No, let's see if he'll do it again. I don't know. Don't look like it. Sounds like it. But the door opens up. Come on, do it. Arrgh. I'm gonna shut it off and wait. Yeah. <laughs> Saying something. <laughs> this is our lunch stop on this part of the tour. I think the reason why this part of the tour is is because of the war and peace aspect of it. This was just um, uh, pre battle stuff that I never ever knew about so it is it's good enough uh, to do this part but I'm uh, looking forward to the Austerlitz battle but Austria is beautiful waiting for people to get done eating Continue on with the tour. Oh, there he is again. <laughs> so this little shrine here has a cannonball hole. Oh yeah, it's there. Right there from the battle. Looks like that. It's not nice to be placed. Oh, that's it's just a bit too neat. That it? is too neat. <laughs> they've, they've trialed that in a perfectly round way. Oh, is that Over six? The years. Yeah, is that a four pounder or a six? six I think. Oh, Oops. sorry. No, you're good. And there's Mary. Is that Fatima? Fatima? Mary. Oh, it's just. Right, I'll get, get in there. Have you got it? Oh, I'm good. You go, go. I'm, I'm getting the plaque. Pretty cool. This is the Danube here, and we're by. Well, I'll let him explain. The Russians burnt it down, but anyway, not that. Look how fast, look how fast the damn you flows. But there was a battle here and then we'll learn about it. Uh oh, they're going that way. I'm going to end this. You don't need to know any of this. <laughs> and across the Danube is another monastery, a Benedictine monastery. So together with the and other tourist one, attraction. Two are the most important. Not sure what the significance of this is. of the train hopefully nothing comes <laughs> runs me over all the green <laughs> vines all throughout this valley <laughs> and the tour and I'm smoking a cigarette so I'm staying behind
it's only on this side of the river and that side is just mountains it's a beautiful country in the uh, spring and summer it's probably a lot more prettier than now Schmidt commence their flanking manoeuvre. Now, what can we see from this position here? This is a monument here, it's known as the French monument, but you'll have time to have a look at it in a minute. You can see that it's dedicated to all forces that are here. Uh, the four names on the, on, on the side, uh, I think we've got um, two soft, two soft up there? Yes, the two soft. We've got Andreas Bayer, I think who's a local freedom <coughs> fighter, and we've got Mortier on the other side, and Schmidt himself is on the front, uh, who's the, the local chap. <coughs> so what can we see from This is a monument to the, the monument. ones who fought. Oh, look at that. I didn't see get to see that. There, see? Isn't that too cool? Let's, uh, let's pan out and then go on down. That sun is. <laughs> and then there's more. <laughs> Get more of this. And I'm not gonna get the front, but as you can see, people still leave. It. It's hard to tell with that sun. No, there it is. That's what I wanted. Uh, we're walking into Durstein and uh, the Rushki army. Part of the Ruski army came down out of the mountains and uh, trapped the French between here and farther west by Krems. Uh, yeah, sort of. But anyway, anyway, anywho, we're going to go up to this castle up top. Uh, we'll get a view of it right around here. And that's where, as we'll find out, where Richard the Lionheart was captured. Bernstein Abbey is up here somewhere. Heavily Catholic area. 
they have shrines all over the place in the fields. It's rather interesting. There's a Catholic church right there. I was wondering about these retaining walls. Here they are patching one up. See how they do that? Isn't that neat? Battlements. That's really interesting. Okay, so we're going to form up in column seven. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a interesting shot here in Dernstein. Get a flavor of Austria and the little hamlets. And they're getting ready for chrism. It's a pretty shot. I like it. I like the shot. This is a famous bakery in town. Since 1780. Uh oh. I think my battery's getting ready to go. Kaiser beer. This is really a neat place. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. I only knew German. It's maybe a restaurant. Look at that door. Mm -hmm. I might turn this thing off. There's always something else around the corner. You can go. Go, go, go. Thank you. See, it's a gallery, an art gallery. Look at that pretty painting. A ton of steps up to the castle. I think the reason why uh, was they were holding him for ransom, and I don't know how the ransom was paid. Schnapps, ooh, sweet jam spirits. That looks interesting. else it's now we're coming to the outskirts of it there's a hotel and restaurant and art gallery
uh, they say in the uh, warmer months that this is very uh, touristy area. Uh, it's a world heritage site, actually, the whole valley. <laughs> Very pi picturesque. There's some more battlements there. Medieval battlement. We better hurry up and get up to that castle before the sun goes down. <laughs> oh well. Let's get some more of this. There's an explanation if you can read it in French, I believe. And to the castle hopefully I was told it was steps <laughs> it's not steps ancient not ancient finally at the top I think whoever can read there's Tor B Tor C both go that's an, they built it in a natural place and just think King Richard the Lionheart looked over this mess after the curry, what a beautiful scenery. Still got more to go. I thought, I thought this was it. I get to rest though. Oh, I don't know what that is. Let's take a look. If it's a bird or what? It's looking at a bird? Yes it is. I know I'm running out of batteries. Thank God I got another one. So. Oh my. You're yeah, losing it Sheesh. everywhere. Thank you. I was changing out my battery. And I'll lose it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the tours. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. Oh, they got a bench here. Still not at the top. I thought we were at the top. We'll look at that when we come back. See, this is a, an old castle. And I am plump tuckered out. As a troubadour of the great king. Wandel myth. Have to look that up. Robin Hood. There's old Robin. 
we know about the legend of Robin Hood from Errol Flynn. Richard, who is that? Uh, yeah, whatever. And music, uh, literature, William Tell, and literature, you ain't gonna be able to read that. And then there is in film, Arrow himself. Okay. Okay, I think we're finally here. Please, I hope we are. I don't know where the rest of the tour guy went. I don't know. Battlements tells the history of it in German. I wonder what the significance of these rocks are. People doing that. Uh, well, probably an awful fortification. <laughs> no. Probably just a tourist thing. Yeah. It's a beautiful blue spar. This is just. I know. So cool. Oh, what's that over there? Is that? And then, and then, and then I, that looks like a monastery too. Way up there in the distance. Hmm. Mm, let's get a shot here. I'm not sure what this is all about. I don't know. I'll put a rock on there. A pebble. A pebble. I'm gonna do that. A pebble. That's my pebble right there. Don't know what it's about though. <laughs> Over that way. See the arrow slow? We can shoot oh, yeah, here we go. arrows out. That was a real arrow hole. Yep. Let me get out of your way. Sure. So, I think he was in this. Cell here. Mm. Ooh. The ghost of Richard. The ghost of King Richard. Huh. He didn't mark it though. He didn't mark it though. Hey, they got graffiti people here too. All over the world. Okay, that was grueling. Too grueling for a smoker. Ridiculously grueling. There's a monastery in the, I think it's a monastery. Doesn't look like a monastery. Take a look at some more of this interesting stuff. <clears throat> Let's look at the back side. See what that looked like. <clears throat> mm. All to protect the traffic on the river. I don't want to fall off the cliff, but might as well take a look over. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> I was going to see if I could fall off the cliff over here. Easily done. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Let me see. I'm getting a little bit too old to be doing this stuff. A little bit too old doing this stuff. Were you going to go? or? Okay. Well, I'm afraid of heights, so I'm just going to... Yes, I know. I know. Oh, good God. 
this is as far as I'm going. There's some more to ba battlements down there. If you can see, yeah, you can see it. I don't know what's up. Is this thing breaking or what? Come on. Something's going on with it. Okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> Because I'm an idiot. That's why I, I can't read. There. Okay. I'm out of here. That's spooky as all get out. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> My days are filled with toys and um, shields. Is that blonde there? I have enough <laughs> to live in. But the dues just delivered to my lord um, are a great burden. At least he is satisfied with payment in kind, as I have no money anyway. We trade for whatever else we do. Oops. As a des Klarissenklosters habe ich gute Kontakte zum Herrn von Kühnring. Obwohl ich eine Frau bin, schätzt er meinen Verstand und holt sich It's gerne pretty. wie heute. There's a castle with the lights on. We just got down from it. Let's see how far we are in. Blurry. Terribly blurry. Yeah. That's a bad picture. <laughs> This camera, oh, well, that don't look too bad, but this is Christmas and Krems. I'm in this restaurant here that the, uh, yeah, you can't even see it. Uh, nah, this ain't real good camera. You can't even see the name of the restaurant. But anyway, uh, Let's uh, see if you know any German. <laughs> it's a die wash out your dear buddy you know fruit culture schlock and duker. I don't know. Don't know my German. But there's Krems, that's where we're at. And I think you've seen something like that. Dernstein with the that you kind of seen. Stein, uh, the the uh, historian that's uh, with our group, does a very good uh, talks on this whole valley here, especially during the Napoleonic Wars. But it's a beautiful valley. It I don't know if I explained uh, uh, earlier, but it's a. Uh, World Heritage um, site, the whole friggin' valley, and I got the tour, or we did. Let's see, nah, you're not gonna see over there. There's no lights. Uh, our hotel is up, up on the hill. There's a Shell gas station. You have never seen any of that. But it's quite quaint, beautiful. Uh, it reminds me of going through a Walther's catalog for railroading, miniature railroading, with all the buildings. Um, <laughs> the uh, model buildings all look uh, like the churches around here. But anyway. This is Krems. Wonderful. I'm, I'm amazed at how quiet it is. It's, it's uh, Austria. Yeah. No, it's Austria. People live here, you know. This is not just to work. Wednesday night in Austria. Oh, it's, uh, it's a small town. Yeah, 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 sure. That has a Hofbrau house. <laughs> That's a city well, gate well, right well, there well, that well, we're well, looking well, at from from medieval times. 
there's their Hofbrau house just like in Newport Kentucky <clears throat> Pretty. Christmas in Austria. It's pretty, isn't it? We're going to walk through. We're following a Moravian. <laughs> She's part of the tour. It's beautiful. So this is Krems at Christmas. Beautiful. I'm I'm with a, a more uh, English people than Americans, and uh, because they know how to party. Yeah, because because English people know how to party. <laughs> That is pretty though, isn't it? Oh, look at look at the lights coming down. Oh, neat. Get a drink, isn't she? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm right behind this drive. Because <laughs> <laughs> we started, we may as well finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's got some. Yes, terrific. We got some. <laughs> <laughs> 